through those tough times and help you there. She always took the stress out of a stressful room in tough conversations. I personally will never forget the impact she had on my life and personally will miss her for a long while. So now I'm going to ask Gerald to come up and say a few words. Gerald Evers. Very tough act to follow. You know, I met uh, Lizanne through Brian, um, and um, <laughs> when you're a good friend, as a great partner, it's always better. Lizanne was that and so much more to him. I'm also privileged to call Lizanne a friend of mine. She was warm, loving, compassionate, and a genuine person. While being open-minded, she was able to be true to her strong values. I had a lot of respect for her for those things. She loved the Canucks and at times had a strong view on what they should do to build a better team and didn't mind sharing that. I will miss her friendship and her loving, genuine nature. My world's a little smaller without her, um, and we, I'll be here for Brian whenever he needs me. I'm going to ask Judy and Bill Gilmore to come up. Judy is Brian's younger Brian's two, one of the, okay, let me start again. Judy is the older of Brian's two younger sisters and farms with her husband, Bill, near Regina, in Saskatchewan. Judy's a nurse and has been a solid rock for Brian and Lizanne to lean on throughout Lizanne's final journey those past two years. Bill and Lizanne found a special bond over the years because they were both imports to the Ulrich, I'm going to butcher your last name, Ulrich family. These two colonies are very close, Judy and Bill. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us in the celebration of Lausanne. We first met Lausanne in December of 1987, when Brian brought her to the Regina for our sister Sharon's wedding. She fit into our family immediately, and she uh, was very loved instantly. There are so many words and ways to describe Lausanne. Thought we'd pick some of those words and we'd attach them to our memory our family has of Lizelle. One of those words would be she easily took charge. <laughs> Judging by the things I gave up, I'm sure you know what we're talking about. Yeah. This is what allowed Lizanne to move up through her career and all the jobs she had. But our memory of that trait is. Everyone knows the game Risk. Yeah. Well, Lizanne was so comfortable taking charge that she would move your army pieces where she thought they should go. Another one of our traits was she had no frills. Very plain. Everyone knew who knew Lizanne knew that she did not like fluff. She rarely wore makeup. She did not like fussing with her hair. She dressed simply, but classy, and she would take a cold beer and nachos over champagne and caviar any day. Another one of her traits was that she had a very keen eye. Well, when her retinas weren't detaching. <laughs> Lizanne could always spot the fastest checkout line in any store. She was very family devoted. Lizanne never missed a birthday. There was always a card in the mail for the person who was celebrating another year around the sun. She made a list of all of our family birthdays, and I actually had to get that list from her for my family birthdays. 
She always made the effort to either host or come to our place or to my sister's place in Estergazy for Christmas. She loved coming to spend two weeks camping at our seasonal campsite at Katepwa, and that would be a whole other speech of memories made there. She and Brian attended weddings, anniversaries, funerals, confirmations, and graduations as much as possible. And she actually got mad at me one time when I knew they were busy and assumed they couldn't come to whatever event we were planning. She said, at least let us know about it and give us the opportunity to see if we can make it at all. So. She also liked to share. She was a very sharing person. One summer when Brian and Lizanne were staying at our campsite at Katepwa, we decided to make pancakes for breakfast one morning. Apparently we didn't have the tools or the means to mix up a large batch at a time. So Lizanne found one of those Tupperware salad dressing, one of those shakers. She filled it with pancake mix and water, put the lid on, started shaking. About five, shake, five shakes later, the lid exploded and she was covered with pancake batter. <laughs> But like I mentioned, she liked to share, so she proceeded to fling the rest of the batter at anybody who dared to laugh at her. She always liked to be involved in everything that was going on. She loved conversation, and if she thought she was missing out on one, what's that? Could be heard from across the room. She loved a good practical joke like we all do, and she was involved in many of them. During one particular visit to our farm, shortly after we had moved into our new home, Brian wanted to play a practical joke on me by drawing on my new countertop with a felt marker pen, which he did, and I stormed off down the, the hall to get something to try and remove it. He knew he had a bottle of acetone handy that he would easily erase the felt marker. Well, Lizanne and our kids knew he was going to do this, so they took it one step further and replaced the acetone with water. <laughs> so you can imagine the look on his face. <laughs> and we can still hear Lizanne laughing about it now. Lizanne was very efficient in everything she did. She got things done and she got them done now. She often burnt her fingers taking the filter and hot coffee grounds out of the coffee maker within seconds of the brewing being finished. She would be emptying the dishwasher within seconds of it completing its cycle. And she was famous for taking our plates off the table, sometimes just as the last forkful was coming off that plate. <laughs> like that. Well, Sam was always very helpful. Not only was she efficient, but yes, she was helpful. While staying at our place, I'd go to water the plants, only to find that they had been watered. I'd go to fold the laundry in the dryer to find it all neatly stacked on the counter. And our favorite, we'd go to pour a drink, only to find one being handed to us. Or I would give her a task, and before I knew it, she was done that task, and she was saying, next. It was exhausting keeping ahead of her. Kazan was a great pet lover. She loved all of our pets, too. Not only were Kai and Ty her babies, but yes, she did love our pets as much as we did. And she would spend quite a bit of time playing with them when she came to visit. One such playtime didn't go so well, though. When one Christmas, Liz Ann was out on our finished deck on the new home. There was no railings on it. And she was throwing rocks for our dog to chase. She took one step on a very icy patch on the deck and went flying right off the deck. Our daughter found her laying on the frozen ground about six feet down. So they hauled her up. Brian took her into a medi center and a quick x-ray revealed nothing was broken, but she had one scookum big bruise on her butt and she was had some tender walking for a few days. Lizanne was very pragmatic. As you all know, Lizanne was very realistic and practical. If it wasn't comfy, she didn't wear it. If it didn't work, she threw it out. If there was an easier way to do something, she found it. If it wasn't realistic, she questioned it. If it was something she had to deal with, she dealt with it. Even when she got her cancer diagnosis, she didn't crumble like most of us would. She just saw it as another one of life's hurdles and something 
she had to deal with and get through. She was diagnosed just as the world came to a halt with COVID. I think at times she was more upset that they had canceled all sporting events and she wasn't able to watch the World Women's Curling Championship or her hockey games. So these are just a few of the memories of Lausanne. We could go on and on, but and Lausanne would be saying next. Next. <laughs> we're going to say goodbye. We're not going to say goodbye, Lausanne, but we're just going to say keep the beer cold and the nachos hot, and we'll see you again. Nicole and Ross Brown. Ross Brown and his wife Mary are close friends and neighbours of Brown and Lausanne in Lions Bay. Ross is a trauma surgeon at Lions Bay Gate, Lions Gate Hospital where Lausanne underwent chemotherapy treatments and spent numerous hours in the emergency and palliative care. Ross is a key, finisher, key figure in the hospital and always took time of his busy schedule to help Lausanne and Brown navigate through the emergency department experiences and visited the design numerous times while in the emergency department and the palliative care board. <laughs> so, Ross Brown. And Mary. <laughs> I know my place in life. Um, Mary's going to speak first and mostly. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm not really used to, to speaking to so many people. I used to be a high school teacher. Um, so I'm, you know, I can speak to like 30 people, but this, this is a crowd. Holy moly. And I can see the bad ones at the back too. I've got my eye on you. I'd like to mention all of the things that I love about Lausanne, but I was told that I could only speak for two minutes. So I'll just have to mention a few of the things on my extensive list. I loved her shy smile. I loved it that when she said something, it was well worth listening to. I loved that she was so smart and accomplished at her job. I loved laughing with her. I loved that she was 40 grit sandpaper to Brian's rough edges. <laughs> That's a woodworking reference. Brian was my wood sensei. He taught me all about woodworking. Well, a little bit about woodworking. Um, did you get that? It was, was it? Okay. <laughs> uh, what I know Lizanne loved. She loved Brian. She loved her cats. She loved her sports teams. And I think she'd have a thing or two to say about the dismal performance of her beloved Canucks in the recent road trip. That was just embarrassing. She loved being home. She once told me that she worked really hard at work, and when she came home, she just wanted to stay home. That was her little nest. She loved her friends and her family and her colleagues, and she'd be so pleased to see you all here today. Oops. I'm just going to segue from that uh, home, family, friends, um, we're kind of pseudo-neighbors um, to the Ocean View crowd. We live on the other side of the creek. We're on Bayview, different parts of Lions Bay. But we were always um, welcomed uh, to visit, and we visited each other's homes. And Brian and Lizanne were, of course, always welcoming. Um, we were welcoming. The neighbors up in Ocean View were welcoming. And that's really how we got to know you. Occasional times on the boat where we either our boat or our friend's boat uh, And I think there's even a picture up there. There's a picture of somebody in their pajamas in our kitchen I'm not quite sure how that happened <laughs> But to me that's all about family and it's so nice to hear the stories uh, Hear the words that really tell us about Lizanne and she's a wonderful person Brian you're a great guy um, I love that it's already our, our, your friends are offering that support 
so much of um, the loss of a person is the impact on everyone else. And of course, from the close part of the circle to the distant part. But I think we're all here for the same reason. Um, we loved her very much. We love you. All the best. In, in closing, um, I'd like to share this with all of you. When we lose someone we love, we must learn not to live without them, but to live with the love that they left behind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to call on David and Cindy Mann. David is the first cousin to Brian and a prominent lawyer in Calgary and only found out this morning he was talking today. <laughs> so David and Cindy have shared their countless hours of laughter and a little drinking and fun family times with Luzanne and Brian at their home in Calgary at their retreat in the Kootenays and here in Lions Bay. Cindy and Luzanne headed off from the first day they met and Cindy was a sounding board and comforting voice for Luzanne during her battle. Cindy and David. Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Dave, I'm Brian's cousin. I'm here from Calgary, as you heard. I'm here with my wife, Cindy. Oftentimes she disavows knowing me, so I'll be giving this, uh, this uh, presentation um, uh, solo. But uh, Brian and Lizanne have always held a special place in our hearts, and we've grown an impressive lady, and uh, she had such a broad repertoire. You know, she, for example, kept Brian in check. She was a goer, a keener. I mean, the times and adventures we have in the Kootenays were unbelievable, from starting large bonfires and justifying what we were going to say to the fire marshal when he came by, to zip lining across the zip line creeks, to our adventures in Disneyland and going on the uh, grizzly, uh, the grizzly mountain uh, waterway again and again and again, <laughs> until people were asking us to leave and we were frozen. Numb. All great times. You know, she could uh, talk about business, she could talk about politics, she could talk about sports. It was just too bad she had all the wrong teams, <laughs> says the guy from Calgary. But we'll see how it goes again this year. Did I mention that she kept Brian in check? Um, and she had the biggest heart, always lending a hand, as everyone here knows. To tell you a story, I have to tell you a wee story to set this one up. Years ago, Brian's sister, Judy, and her family were out at our new place, and it was in the country, and we had a septic field, and we were talking about the septic alarm, and their daughter, Amanda, who was small at the time, wow, well, that small, she's like that small, she says, well, what happens if the septic alarm fails? And I said, well, then you have two inches of shit in your basement, and she says, oh, and I thought, oh, that was kind of funny, and we moved on with life. But karma always lingers nearby. <laughs> and if you roll the movie forward a couple years, Brian and Lizanne have the unfortunate uh, timing of being guests in our home when there is two inches of shit in our basement. <laughs> and who's down there mucking through it all with us was Lizanne. God, God bless her heart. And, uh, you know, when they'd come to visit us in Calgary, um, when they were heading home, she would always take the wheel that, that morning of departure. For whatever reason, Brian was always tired that morning. <laughs> and for years, he actually thought Golden was a suburb of Calgary. <laughs> and he didn't realize it was an hour and a half drive. And he always blamed the altitude. But I think it might have had something to do with Captain Morgan. But, you know, <laughs> we, we shall see about all of those things. And, you know, did I mention that she kept Brian in check as well? <laughs> But you know, when I say that she has one of the biggest hearts we've seen, when I say that she has one of the biggest hearts, I don't exaggerate that. And in my line of work, you know, it's a rare thing where you see a heart that big. You recognize it instantly, and you hold on to it. And so we shall.
I have a few stories I've been asked to read from people who are not able to make it today. So I'm going to try and get through them. And I won't do them justice from the people who sent them, but I'll share them with Brian. Dear Brian, from Jim Chapel, a good friend and curling mate. Dear Brian, unfortunately I can't be at today's memorial, but please know I'm thinking of you and your family and Lizanne's family today as you celebrate her life and reflect back on so many memories. It's not easy to say goodbye. I know in my heart we've all lost a good friend and a person who has taken, us, taken away from us far too early. As you know, I got to know her over the years. It didn't take long to come to see. She was a very special lady. I always remember her welcoming and infectious smile on those on the early Saturday mornings, sometimes cold, rainy mornings at curling. Like many, I'm heartbroken to see she's no longer with us. She put up one heck of a fight, but hopefully you'll know comforting that when the battle is over, she's resting in peace and will never be forgotten. Your friend, Jim. I have another email that I've been asked to read, but I have to do a translation from Scottish to civilized Canadian. Um, I'm going to use the word knackered. <laughs> what that means in Scotland is tired. Okay, let's take it at that. Don't look up Google or anything. That's what we're going to use. They're tired, not the other connotation that Google gives you. Okay, so how does one, this is from Melody and Graham Parks, friends from Line Bay. We're currently traveling in Greece, and it has a significance. How does one start to describe someone like Zan? As you know, everyone passes away, assumes an almost mystical status. But in this case, one can't say enough about our dear friend. We have known Lizanne since she and Brian moved to Lions Bay in 2004. And we developed a deep and lasting friendship over those years, which included holidays together and should have included the cruise that we're on as we write. Our Italian venture is remembered not so much for the Florence or the Rome, but the, from the word word knackers. There's, something, there's a story here somewhere. I'm not going to be told until later, I guess, a couple of drinks later. This was Lausanne's French-Canadian version of knackered, which may have been what it seems. It seems it really are. It seems to be. Lausanne was an unwavering, loyal friend, a generous and welcome, welcome hostess, always there to help. She will be sorely missed. A young life taken so soon. Love, Melody and Graham. I now have another email from a former colleague, or a retired colleague of ours, Sarah Brown, who's a friend and colleague of Lausanne from Pacific Blue Cross. And she's currently somewhere in Europe somewhere, I think. Lausanne was one of my best friends. We met at work and we soon began doing things outside of work together. There was the four of us. Yeah, I remember those four. Yeah, I think there are. Yeah. Liz, Claire, Lizanne, and me. We all celebrated birthdays. We'd go away on weekends and share our lives. When Lizanne shared the news that she had ovarian cancer, I was devastated. I was so honored to be able to journey with Lizanne through our illness. We fought hard and still was still caring for so many people, despite what she, she was still caring for so many people, despite what she was going through. She contributed so much for fundraising for Orient Cancer to help beat this terrible disease. I understand from Brian it was over $40,000 she raised in the last two years for Orient Cancer. When I think about how I like to spend time with Lizanne, I struggle for words. Words seem to be so small. It's the way she made me feel. It didn't matter what we were doing. It was just fun to be together. I knew she always had my back. Being away during this time has been very hard, but when I go for a walk and see a beautiful view, a drink of a drink, drink a good glass of wine or play a game, I know she would have wanted me to beat she wanted she would have wanted me to beat me at it. I feel Lizanne and I smile and cry. I feel I will smile because I'm blessed to have her as my friend, and I cry because I miss her terribly terribly. Lizanne, thank you for being an amazing friend. You really do live on in my heart forever. Rest peacefully, Sarah. Can I ask? Can I ask that Ron and Mary McLaughlin come up? Ron is uh, the mayor of Lions Bay, and he and Mary and our friends of friends, Brian and Lizanne.
Good afternoon, everybody. When Brian asked Mary and me to say a few words at Lausanne's celebration of life, we knew this would be a difficult task. Not because we wouldn't be able to talk about all of our happy memories of her, but because we, it meant we were going to say goodbye to our very dear friend and neighbor. She left us far too soon. Lizanne was a quiet, strong, gentle, caring, and always calm woman. She had a beautiful smile and was a good listener. She loved extended family gatherings, which is a good thing since there are dozens and dozens of people in hers and Brian's families. She and Brian lived the Canadian dream of driving from the West Coast to the prairies and back to visit with family members. She was always very keen, knowing she was going to see family and had an afterglow when she returned home. We got to know Brian Liz and Lizanne through our mutual love of cats. They had two female cats, a year younger than our two male cats, and we exchanged cat care duties for the last 15 or so years when we traveled. Looking after our lads was not always, e not always the easiest job as one of our cats was 18 pounds and hated everyone in the world except for us and Auntie Lizanne. In 2017, we decided to go to Hawaii together, which of course produced some anxiety for us all since we couldn't use our preferred cat sitters. Host with Brian of happy hour at the shack. This was our Thursday evening block watch gathering of our upper Ocean View Road neighbors. We all got spoiled as Lizanne and Brian hosted most of the time. All of the time, actually. <laughs> it wasn't that we were too lazy to host. Everyone just felt so comfortable at Lizanne's place. I was on the advisory board of the Salvation Army for 10 years, and in uh, combination with the Army Executive, was in charge of running the annual Hope in the City Breakfast in December each year. It's the largest corporate fundraiser the Army has in British Columbia. I was looking for someone to fill my shoes at the board and at the breakfast when I stepped aside. Lizanne graciously accepted my request and did an excellent job for several years, making a huge difference to the disenfranchised that the Salvation Army helps. Now, I know that most people don't really know what goes on in other people's homes. We can guess, but we really don't know. What we do know is that there was always quite a commotion at Lausanne's whenever Winnipeg Blue Bombers played the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. <laughs> Being an avid sports fan and true Winnipegger through and through, Lausanne loved to claim bragging rights when her beloved Big Blue Bombers crushed the big green riders, seemingly always, even if that's not the truth. We are so very sad to be saying goodbye to our dear friend, but we know she is here with us in spirit because she always loved to be around friends and family. I'm now going to ask Andrew and Alison Mitchell, who are close friends, who have travelled here today from Vancouver Island, and they knew Brian and Lizanne from Brian's days at Creole Parks, just up the road from Pacific Blue Cross. Good afternoon, everyone. Brian phoned us up earlier this week and he asked Andrew to say a few words. Andrew immediately delegated. So I'm here. <laughs> so my name is Alison and I'm here today with my husband, who used to work with Brian. I first met Lausanne and Brian in 1995 at an event in Vancouver being hosted by their employer, Creo. Lausanne and Brian had recently moved to Vancouver from Ottawa. I distinctly remember talking with Lizanne and listening to her stories of whitewater canoeing 
on the Petawawa, Algonquin, and Madawaska rivers. I was impressed and felt this must be an activity that requires lots of courage. I believe it was this same courage that helped her through these past few years. Though I didn't know it at the time, Lizanne and Brian would become very good lifelong friends. Lizanne and Brian made many lifelong friends through Creo, and many of them are here today in that back corner over there. Over the years, there have been many parties and events with the Creo crowd, as I lovingly call them. There were house parties, which included dancing on the coffee tables in Whistler, and a party at their home in New Westminster in the Tiki Room. A particularly notable party was hosted by Creo at the Armory in Vancouver. There was a gangster theme, appropriate attire was a must, and music and dancing was provided by Colin James. It was the talk of the town. Not only did Lausanne enjoy canoeing, but she was quietly a bit of a fitness fanatic and always took good care of her body. In Ottawa, she instructed aerobics. In BC, she participated in many sports, such as soccer, curling, and golf. I always remember her wearing her Fitbit and counting her daily steps. I believe being so fit and healthy helped her when undergoing such intensive treatment and as she, as she was starting from a position of strength. Even her surgeon commented on her strong abdominal muscles. Lizanne loved her family and friends. Many vacations were spent visiting family in Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and Calgary. She loved to have family visit her and to be able to show them the sights of Vancouver and Whistler. Friends were always welcome to drop in or stay a few days. She also loved to travel to new places, especially with their good friends, Melody and Graham. Together, they traveled to Las Vegas, Italy, and Thailand. She had hoped to travel with them again on a three-week Mediterranean cruise this fall to celebrate her retirement. But back in June, she made the difficult decision to cancel as she wanted to wait until she felt stronger. Though Lausanne and I have always been friends, it was her cancer diagnosis that brought us closest together. We would often chat and message each other. What impressed me about Lausanne was how Right from the beginning, even though she knew her chances were 50-50, she chose to take the glass half full approach to life. Initially, she endured several months of intensive treatment and to give her something to look forward to, she booked a few nights of winter storm watching at the famous Wiccan Inish Inn in Tofino. Unfortunately, COVID arrived and the inn had to close. However, in December 2021, the hotel was open again and she was able to realize her dream. In August 2021, Lizanne turned 60. On the morning of her birthday, Andrew and I called her to wish her a happy birthday. She was out shopping with visiting nieces and Alana and Dion. Brian suggested we call back in the afternoon between three and four o'clock, which we did. She was holed up in their guest bedroom at the back of the house. She was upset with Brian because she'd asked him to make a Disney reservation for the four of them, and he hadn't done it. But she also sensed there was something going on, or why else was she sitting alone in the guest bedroom talking to us? It turned out for two weeks, Brian had been plotting and organizing a surprise party for her to be hosted by one of their many good neighbors, David. All guests were required to arrive between three and four o'clock. All of their neighbors, were in on the act and parking had been arranged so that she didn't have to see a road full of parked vehicles when she was finally taken across the road to David. Needless to say, the party was a huge success and she did forgive Brian for not making that dinner reservation. Throughout her treatment with her glass half full approach, she showed tremendous courage and was still determined to make a difference in the lives of others. She put together a team of willing volunteers and raised funds for the Ovarian Cancer Canada Vancouver Walk of Hope. In 2020, she was the second highest fundraiser in the Lower Mainland. Lizanne, you have been a wonderful inspiration to me. I'm truly honored to have called you my friend. I hope you are now at peace. I miss you.
I have a message from one of the four ladies, and, uh, and I knew Liz because she was a person I worked with over my, and, or before she retired with us. My name is Liz White, a former colleague of Liz Ann, and someone proud to have called her my friend. When we worked together, John Crawford sometimes referred to us as Liz Squared. That's true, because it was two Lizzies, and I'm never sure which one was which sometimes. Uh, it was a trial for him, I'm sure, because we both had strong opinions. That was definitely true. And didn't hold back from sharing them with him, even if we didn't ask. We were part of a quartet that started hanging together when we all worked at Pacific Blue Cross. Zara, Claire, Lizanne, and myself shared several annual getaways, Salt Spring Island, Victoria, and Whistler, to name a few. We dragged along more food and drink that four people could possibly consume. But we were prepared. Exploring, storytelling, and shared laughter are definitely the best parts of the weekends. Although not able to get together as often in the last couple of years, we managed to continue the conversation and chuckles. Lizanne was a source of knowledge, common sense, and support to me. Support to me. And the way she handled the tough stuff in both her work and personal life showed her strength and of character. Her courage and positive, pragmatic attitude for the last three years have been admirable. I will miss my friends. Hugs to Brian and all the rest of the family. Liz. I'm now going to call on Jamie from the Salvation Army to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is a privilege to be able to be here and speak today. Uh, as you've heard, my name is Jamie Brond, uh, and my role is to give leadership of the Salvation Army across the province of British Columbia. And uh, I'm only able to do that because we have 2,000 employees and thousands of volunteers, of which Lizanne was one. Uh, she was a member of a group called the Greater Vancouver Advisory Board, which is a group of men and women who are business professionals, professionals who give uh, strategic advice and direction to the Salvation Army on any number of issues, real estate and legal and uh, financial and labor, and uh, it's a really important group that we uh, rely on as volunteers. And uh, in those board meetings, I got to know uh, Lizanne. Uh, I got to know her as being very wise and insightful, and people appreciated uh, hearing her point of view. I also got to know that she was also just really lovely and nice and kind, and uh, I don't take that for granted at all in this world in which we live. Uh, I also got to know that Lizanne was really hardworking, but didn't need for you to know that she was hardworking. Uh, I know those people, you know, they work hard and they say, I work really hard. Uh, and Lizanne wasn't like that. Uh, she gave you the impression that everything was fine, even in the midst of uh, all the hard work that she did. As you heard earlier, uh, she became for many years the chair of the Hope in the City Breakfast Committee. And uh, that's an event for us uh, where we celebrate Christmas, invite people to celebrate Christmas with us every year for 20 years now, the last two virtually, unfortunately, but uh, at the Vancouver Convention Center. And uh, I remember the last in-person event, which was December 2019, uh, and it was at the Convention Center, and there were over 1,000 people there, and we raised over $400,000. And I still actually remember the moment when, early that morning when I saw Brian and uh, Lizanne arrive, and uh, Lizanne just uh, looked smiling and glowing and happy, and you'd never know that she was the chair of the committee that organized, the, organized this massive event uh, on behalf of the Salvation Army. And so we're really grateful for uh, the legacy of her volunteerism and support. You might want to honor Lizanne by attending our 21st annual Hope in the City Breakfast on December the 7th at the Vancouver Convention Center. Uh, sorry for that little plug, but it really will be an opportunity to uh, honor the legacy of Lizanne's uh, work. And so uh, on behalf of all of us in the Salvation Army, we do want to offer our condolences to Brian and family and assure you of our thoughts and prayers. Uh, I also bring greetings and condolences from that advisory board that Lizanne was a member of, uh, from Bob McFarland, the chair, and all the members of the board uh, who send their greetings and condolences, who had great respect and admiration for Lizanne. Uh, so thanks so very much. I'm now going to ask Doug Klein to come up, and also any of you who are thinking about coming up, we're going to be asking for those people to join us before Brian comes up and gives us his, his um, th thoughts. So, um, Doug Klein.
My name's Doug Klein. I have a secret weapon there. My, I became Dan, Brian, and Jim Chapel, who you heard from earlier, for many years became part of our weekly life. Uh, a curling team is something special. You don't participate to further your career. There's no business plan. There's no union. And your teammates become extended family over time. This was the Lisanne that I had the pleasure of knowing. Of course, uh, Lisanne is not someone who sits back when it comes to self-improvement. So we also went to the prestigious four-foot curling school. No plug. Uh, more accurately, we attended the four-foot school, but graduated as perhaps uh, six-foot curlers. After going to school and learning, this is the curling school, and learning that everything you did was wrong, and that there are only three essential things that you must do, we came back and all felt humbled because we could only think about one thing at a time, and the other sort of fell off the mat. Um, the other way to ruin a curling season is to watch the pros do it. Lisanne and Brian spent uh, a, a lot of time watching curling on TV, and uh, later they went to the Briar. Now, the Briar is the big curling contest, uh, world's elite in action, and you, you see these fantastic shots that nobody can make except the pros. But you can visualize. So when you come back to your league play, you visualize the shot that you really want, yeah, unfortunately, the reality doesn't quite catch up to the visualization. Lisanne was a great teammate, someone who brought sportsmanship and empathy to every game. In addition, she always brought peppermints. One could always count on Lisanne peppermint during any game when your spirits or stamina were flagging, and just as often for the opposition as well as for our own team. There's a bowl of peppermints uh, that you may have seen on the way in. I would wish that you would take one and eat it when you're thinking of Lisanne. When I think of Lisanne, I remember the person that I truly liked. There are not that many in my life that resonate the way she does. Thanks, Lisanne. Thanks. I'm now going to invite anyone who would like to come up and say a few words to come up and take the mic. So I guess it's what they call an open mic. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Pippa, and I'm the coach of the over 45 ladies uh, uh, soccer team called the Ravens, and I'm here representing my colleagues over there. Um, and... Uh, Lisanne joined our team quite a long time ago. Her, her playing career was unfortunately cut short by the retinal detachments, uh, which preceded the, the cancer. And we haven't been able to see as much of her as we would have liked because of COVID um, throughout her illness, which I think we all somewhat re regret. Um, so we're, we're sorry about that, Brian. <laughs> but um, we remember her very fondly. Um, she, when she joined our team, she was one of those doer people who said, how can I help? And as I was talking to my friends from the team before uh, before the event started today, that um, that came up. She she set up a uh, a website for us to be able to all make sure we're at the games on time and and that sort of thing, which was quite a, a technical feat to do. Um, and and also how supportive she was to a number of our teammates, as you probably will gather. Over 45 ladies recreational soccer is not particularly high achieving and athletic prowess but we have a lot of fun and uh, and we keep fit and it's 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 all it's all about being being with our friends and Linda Zan was a true um, enthusiastic member of the team um, she was very popular amongst us she tried hard she showed up to all the practices and we really enjoyed having her I particularly remember her her dry sense of humor and that uh, you probably all know better than we do, but um, she had this funny way of saying incredibly funny things in this deadpan manner, and you didn't know whether she was joking or not, and then she would just twinkle her eye, and you knew that she was joking all the way through. And, uh, and we really enjoyed her company, and we very much miss her. So thank you for allowing me to say uh, a few words.
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Brendan Dick. I'm the chair of the board of Pacific Blue Cross. And uh, I joined the board about four, four and a half years ago. And if you're very familiar with boards, we meet about four times a year. Uh, we're not staff, so we, we, we don't come often to the organization. And four and a half years ago, I was uh, elected to the board. And I think you heard John, the CEO, reference something about changes to the board and what that impact that does on staff. But I was also appointed onto the audit committee and the chair of the audit committee. And Lizanne at the time was the CFO. And when I wrote this initially, I didn't actually hear the remarks about the, the, the direct way Lizanne was as a person because that's not actually the person I met. And maybe that's because I was a board member and staff often have to tolerate a lot about us new people who show up. We're sort of in charge. But there's a ma major gap about what they know and what we know, and they have to tolerate us for a very, very long time. And as she worked with me as on the audit committee, she was so generous with her knowledge and expertise uh, and, uh, that it was just remarkable. And much more remarkable now that I know who exactly the person I was dealing with. Their tolerance and your tolerance at home, Brian, after some of these meetings must have been great. And I appreciate that so much. So later, I move on to become the chair of the board, and Lizanne moves on to become the chief risk officer. And at the time, I, I was in a conflict on a particular issue on the board, and so I'd have to leave the board meeting. And at Pacific Blue Cross, for some reason, they send you to the risk manager's office, or the chief risk <laughs> officer's office. Now, the truth is, the office was right beside the board meeting, and I would step in there. And oftentimes, Lizanne was in the office, but I'd step in there anyways. And I just, because I love the CFL, but I love the BC Lions. She loves the CFL, and she loves the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Brian loves the CFL, but he doesn't like the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, nor the BC Lions. <laughs> <laughs> so we would spend an inordinate amount of time talking, and I'm getting to know her. Again, on that personal level that you don't get the opportunity as you as friends, and as coworkers get to do, we only meet so infrequently. But, and oftentimes they come back to get me, and it was really, I'm a lot more comfortable and happy here than I want to go back and talk to the rest of you. And I'm going to do that exercise and have you all disappear. So, a few months ago, we did say goodbye to Lizanne at PBC. Uh, but to be honest, this was too soon for me. And I'll miss Lizanne and her calm and demeanor and her generosity and her, and her wonderful humor. And I want to thank that I could say a few words. And I'm joined here today with Dr. Malcolm Williamson on our board and Marty Gibbons, Mr. Marty Gibbons, our vice chair. And I want to say to you, Brian, and to the family, on behalf of the board of directors of Pacific Blue Cross, I, I offer our condolences. I'm sorry for your loss. And to Lizanne, I want to thank you for all the work and generosity, and you made PBC a better organization. Thanks very much. Uh, any more people? Anybody else like to come up and say a few words? Clear? Hello, everyone. I am Claire. I'm the fourth member of the quartet that you've heard about. And I was privileged to call Lizanne my friend. I first met Lizanne when I joined in 2014 PBC. And on my first day, fresh from coming from England, she stopped by my office and she said to me, so are you coming for lunch then? And I was like, well, I haven't felt like I've really done anything so far today. And she's like, well, they've got egg salad in the canteen. <laughs> so was the four of us that were away for weekends. And Lizanne took me to my first Canucks game, at which point she explained some of the finer details of hockey to me as what she classed a newcomer to Canada. And... I was determined to have a foam finger. And Lizanne's graciousness 
did not bat an eyelid. She says, well, I'm going to get beer and burgers. And I said, and I'm going to get my foam finger. So I was determined and she was gracious. Although when I started to cheer for the other team, she did point out to me that we only cheer for the Canucks. <laughs> I have many memory, wonderful memories of our time away together, of the four of us together, L the four of us. And Lizanne and I were often the first two up. And we would be getting hungry. And she'd finally say, if I start cooking the bacon, that'll get them up. So Lizanne, you will never be forgotten. And your seat at our girls' dinners will remain open. And Brian, I wish you so much our sincerest condolences. Anybody? I'm probably going to destroy this. Anybody else like to say anything? I'm going to call on Brian. Tough. Box of Kleenex, thanks. Well, there's not much left to say, actually. Uh, you've heard it all. Well, maybe there is, actually. Um, first, I want to say thanks to John for being our MC today. John was the best boss that Lizanne ever had. Um, he always had her back. He always gave the recognition to her that she could pass on to her team. So I want to say thanks, John. You know, job well done. Um, people often ask <coughs> where Lizanne and I met. And uh, as you've heard, she's from Winnipeg, and I live there. And uh, Lizanne loves to tell this story uh, mostly at my expense. Um, so I'll try and tell it in her voice. Um, she was, we both met at Bristol Aerospace. Um, I was in the engineering department, and she was in the accounting department. And uh, we all played baseball, so we all had mutual friends. Um, but she and I didn't know each other first. So um, in her words, Brian was trying to contact one of these other girls that he was interested in in the accounting department. And um, I ended up replying to him over the computer system that that girl wasn't available. So. He was getting all these messages from me. He didn't know who I was, but um, one of my friends pointed him out in the cafeteria one day. Um, it's the guy wearing the red tie. It's, that's actually this, this red tie. And uh, so she was quite tickled that she knew who I was, and I didn't know who she was <laughs> for quite a while. And uh, eventually, I did find out who she was. And uh, he's, she said, I'm trying to use her voice, um, he was so impressed that I was a single girl and I had bought my own house. And uh, so I eventually convinced him uh, to come to my housewarming party. And he said, yeah, sure. He said, and, and he even said that he would bring all the beer. And so come, come the, the day of my housewarming party, um, he showed up late. <laughs> and he only had six beer. <laughs> All I could do is defend myself and say, well, I bought all the beer for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that party uh, continued for 35 years. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you can relate uh, to this. You've heard quite a bit about it. She always looked out for others. Um, at work, she always had her teams back, as you've heard. Um, at parties, she was always the last person to leave after all the dishes and everything was cleaned up. Um, and she was always apologizing for inconvenience that she really didn't cause to anybody else. Even to the last day, um, the evening she died, she was apologizing to me and to the nurse for something that she didn't do. Um, that's just who she was. She was loving and caring. Um, something you may not know, um, outside of all the other circles of, of her life, uh, she was a hugaholic. It was hugs were like candy to her, and uh, she considered them a gesture of something that made her feel safe, um, particularly with me, and and uh, confirmation that she was wanted. And I never really, I didn't know this early in our, our relationship, and uh, 
she came to me one day, she was almost in tears, and she says, why don't you hug me very often? Like, don't you love me? And it kind of blew me away, and I said, I didn't know you needed hugs. And so from that day on, we had a deal um, that whenever she wanted a hug or needed a hug, she would just ask for it, and I never refused it. I, and that was something special to us that became known as hug time. So if she wanted something, it, is it hug time? And uh, that, that continued on for, well, to her very last day. Um, she often lamented <coughs> that when she was in school, she wasn't part of the, the cool gang or the in crowd, yet um, everyone was drawn to her. Um, all the, the students and classmates, they would always come to her for comfort or for problem solving or she was a bit of a tomboy. She had a lot of guy friends, not so many girlfriends uh, in school, um, but she called herself kind of the Dr. Ruth of the St. Norbert School. And uh, she demonstrated, uh, well, I'll say fast forward through her entire life, um, she demonstrated in spades that um, it's not being popular that makes a lot of people love you. It's, it's what you give back. So thank you for the lesson, Dr. Ruth. Just look at this room here. All, all these people that, they're not here because she's popular. They're here because they love her. <coughs> she was a very good judge of character. Um, she would have been a great um, VP of HR in any company. I would have hired her if I had a company in an HR department um, if she hadn't been an accountant. And I asked her one day, so how do you judge people? And she says, well, all I have to do is look at their eyes and I can tell what kind of person they are. So um, all of you who she cherished as friends, whether you realize it or not, you've passed a pretty tough test to become her friend. And uh, she had very high standards. So uh, well done. Me, I come, I somehow slid under that radar, so. <laughs> Um, and I got to ask this, you've already heard. How many of you have uh, received birthday cards from Lausanne? Yeah. Um, I, I don't have to say, say much about that anymore. Um, she was famous for that, uh, a handwritten birthday card. Um, but she was half serious about it. Sadly, she got her wish. Um, she said to me a few times, she goes, I hope I die before you do. And I went, why do you say that? And she goes, because I don't have to deal with all your damn tools. <laughs> <laughs> and you all know, um, Lizanne had integrity in spades. She was honest. She was always on time, dragging me along to make sure that I was on time with her. She was reliable. And she treated everybody fairly, and I think that's something that you all remember her for. Um, and another trait that's quite special is she embraced imperfection. Um, she overlooked it in everybody, well, almost. Um, I have an unfortunate tendency to be a perfectionist. I can't afford that at work, but at home I can. Um, we live in a house on the side of a mountain, and houses on the side of a mountain all move towards the ocean. And everything in our house is crooked. The doors don't close. The cupboards don't line up. The countertop's not level. But she always said to me, she says, I love our crooked house. Don't change anything yet. And I think really what she meant was she dreaded me starting any new project that would take forever to finish. <laughs> <clears throat> and did she ever love sports? And you've already heard a lot about that. Uh, she was more of an avid or maybe a rabid sports fan than most guys that I know. Um, you hear about the curling, or you heard about the curling. Um, she golfed, actually from an early age, and she's the only person I know who has hit her brother-in-law in the head with a golf club, <laughs> hit her friend and instructor in the, golf, in the head with a golf club, and who nailed a stranger on, in the head and knocked him out uh, with a wild drive off the 18th hole, and we were busy. Uh, she loved hockey. Um, she watched hockey as a kid, and I think that's where it came from. She watched it with her dad. Um, as you heard, we shared uh, in season tickets with John for the Canucks for years. Um, and it was, like they said, it was always the Canucks first, the Winnipeg Jets second, 
And eh, the Montreal Canadiens third, I wasn't so happy about that, but that's the way she was. Football, on the other hand, was the other way around. She didn't like the BC Lions. Um, for her, uh, she's being from Winnipeg, and I was from Saskatchewan. <clears throat> so you can imagine the rivalry in our house. Uh, every time the, the Blue Bombers played the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and you'd probably love to be a fly on the wall to hear some of the text message wars that went back and forth between Winnipeg and Lions Bay during those, those games. Um, we did actually get her to wear a green jersey once. Uh, I, I, there's actually a picture of it here. So uh, thus the story about this jersey. There is really nobody on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers team that wears 61. So the story is that Lausanne was born in 1961. Um, and she thought it would be nice that if she could retire when she was 61 years old. She turned 61 nine weeks ago. Unfortunately, she didn't get to enjoy her retirement that she worked so hard for and looked so forward to enjoying, and that breaks my heart. But I can hear her saying right now to all of you and to me, go out and live every day like it was your last. From the early days of our relationship, um, and kind of relates to what you heard before, she had a knack for setting me straight when I was being unrealistic or biased or just ignorant. Um, and I called this her uh, slap in the face with reality, slapping me in the face with reality. And, and I just hated it, um, because every time she said it, I knew that she was right, and she was always right. Um, and all I could do was admit that it was really good for me, so it became a slap in her face with reality. And it always ended up with her saying, smarten up, mister. Um, and she loved her cats. You, you'll see the pictures. You've heard the stories. Um, uh, she sadly, uh, or sorry, sadly, there was only one cat left uh, by the time uh, she was very sick in the last week. Um, but that cat stayed at the foot of her bed constantly until she was gone. And uh, I was glad that I could be there too. So farewell, babe. Watch over us, and somebody else will deal with my tools. I would ask that you all remain at the tables. We're going to circulate some wine, I believe, right now. And we're going to do a toast at that point, and then we'll, then we'll wrap up. And there's also food for us after that as well, so please don't rush away. So we can now start to serve the wine. Just take the tables that will get to you. Those in the back who are standing will get it first, I think. So we'll work from there. Thank you.
I would ask that everybody stand. I think everybody. I think everybody's got a drink. Okay. Okay. Toast time. Toast time. Hopefully, you all have drinks. I would ask that each of you raise your glass in memory of Lisanne Marie. Mayat, a unique, loving, inspirational, thoughtful, and beloved person by all of us. She had made an impact on all of our lives in her own special way that we will never forget. To Lizanne. <laughs> we're going to scroll the eight minute video and then we're going to do a quick thank you and there's a whole lot of food over there afterwards. So we're going to scroll the music and video and watch these special pictures for about eight minutes.
Okay, this is the last time you have to hear from me. This is the last time you have to hear from me, okay? Brian and family, we'd like to thank everyone today for coming to honour Lausanne today. Particularly thanks go to those who travelled from out of town. From Victoria, Duncan, Campbell River, Comox, Calgary, Regina and Seattle. To all of those who travelled to today. To everyone who's joining us on live stream over the internet. And anyone we've missed, thank you for coming. Brian and the family, we'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to the North Shore Palliative Care team who attended Lausanne at home in our final weeks with outstanding compassion and care. Donations can be made in Lausanne's name and will be dedicated to funding their fine work. And we can send that out afterwards on an email link as well. The celebration of this touching tribute that Brian and family will never forget only happened because of the greatness, gracious help of so many people. Lizanne, the ultimate hostess, would be pleased to know we all met and exceeded her high standards. A sincere thank you to the following people. Lizanne's sister, Nicole Sorin, and her Brian's sister, Judy Gomer, for showing most the planning for this event and the one that's going to take place in Winnipeg. Jessica Mann for preparing the photo slide that we saw in wonderful job. In great pictures, I wouldn't want to think what my pictures look like. <laughs> Mary Brown, Mary McLaughlin, Carol Langley for helping with the food, flowers, and setup. Brian Holland for supplying the computer equipment and running the visuals, making sure they didn't crash, which was always a concern. Um, Melissa Dabrowski here at Eagle Glen Eagles for managing the venue setup and her team for the beverage service that we have received. Zara and Brianna at the city of Van West Vancouver, I well, we made a mistake there, for making the facility available today. All our friends and family who helped set up and in advance tear down today's celebration. And least but not least, all the neighbours, friends, colleagues who supplied equipment, food, comfort and support over the past few weeks. Thank you all from the family. We now have food and having there to be eaten and share memories with each other. So I encourage you all to stay, share the memories of Lausanne with each of us and let's remember Lausanne. Never forget Lausanne. She made a significant in your life. You will never forget her. Thank you.